Dude. Hey. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> What's up, dude? Nothing much. I took a, a flight. Uh, I was sitting behind Mike Tyson about last week. I was just asking you the guy for an autograph, and he punched me. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you. I know you're the first person. Uh, I know we're the first person that you wanted to talk to about the incident with yeah. Mr. Tyson, and uh, we really appreciate you coming. You know, he was probably like, "Listen, uh, I don't care. It, I don't care if I'm world champion. It doesn't matter if you're gonna face. if you're gonna fucking talk to me like a son of a bitch. You're gonna fucking get treated like a son of a bitch. It doesn't matter. My hands are lethal weapons. I'm a registered tiger. It doesn't matter." If if I drank blood for breakfast, if you fucking look at me crazy on the airplane and you're this close to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking punch you. I mean, I had no choice. Those are pretty good. Those are pretty good. <laughs> <impression>. <laughs> uh, Thank you. You know what's crazy about that is like, imagine imagine you're just you have to be drunk to be like, I'm gonna talk shit to Mike Tyson right now. Every- no, you gotta be off your fucking rocker. <clears throat> you gotta really think like, oh man, I'm a. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. No consequences in this kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like a social media warrior. Well, have you ever had one of those friends that like you're drinking at like a bonfire or something and they're like, I could jump over that. It's kind of the same Yeah, thing. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was that, I was that like, asshole. I could. I, I was could, like, I don't want to combat this. I could call this, Mike that. Tyson a peasant <laughs> and hit him with a water bottle. What's, I mean. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not like that guy. punching. What is he going to do? No, oh, yeah. That's, I feel like that's a little bit different than jumping yeah. over a bonfire. That's like trying to fucking fuck with Mike Tyson, the world champion, even in, the, in his 80s. He's on testosterone. Like, he looks great, right? He didn't look amazing in that fight, but he's also fighting another fighter. So it's like he, he, you know what I mean? He's he like, looked, he looked pretty in pretty good form on the plane. <laughs> it was not bad on that plane. That's right. Like, ah, oh, he's good at this. <laughs> What's crazy is people will look back and that will be his most famous like punch ever. They'll be like, you mean Mike Tyson, the guy who punched that dude on the plane? You know what I mean? Like world champion of what? Punching people on planes? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, uh, like he's. Bitten a lot of cheeseburgers, but that one bite of that guy's ears. No one ever talks <laughs> about all those steaks he consumed. Yeah. Nobody, nobody ever talks about the time that he was chewing bubble gum, but he chews on one guy's ear for 45 seconds. and Get over here, Evander. Put some ketchup all over the back of your lobes. Oh, let me see your ear. Get a little kiss. Oh, this, <laughs> this podcast brought to you by Everlast. And then I bit him with my teeth. What about what isn't that crazy that one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet talks with a lisp? Doesn't that kind of like perturb you a little bit? Like he's like it it almost it's not a weakness. I wouldn't say that a lisp is a weakness, but you don't you don't think like, oh, this guy with a lisp is like um like a warrior or like a tough person, do you? Like necessarily. Like how many people do you know that has a lisp? Do you look at him like that's probably the world next world champion? You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I bet you this guy could knock out everyone. I bet you this guy can knock out pretty much any man on the planet. <laughs> he can't. He can't say well, yes for seven. shit, but he can punch. He's, so you're saying that like where he lacks in like vocal clarity, he makes up for in physical strength. Yeah. <laughs> I, Life's funny like that sometimes. Dude, dude. It's so weird how different he's become. Like as a as a human. Like, do you ever watch him interview people? Oh, I love his show, Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. <laughs> He'll just say I something. I love his show, dude. He'll say something so deep for no reason. Uh, it's what, not for no reason. I think he's no, literally what, trying to figure it out still. Time, he's tra- he's still pontificating on what life is. He he's a wanderer. On uh, Joe Rogan, the very first time he went on Joe Rogan, he goes, you ever think about all the people that died and how proud they would be of where we are? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't related to it's anything. It's so powerful. Sometimes uh, I think you, thoughts are like a river. You uh, know, what I, mean? I think thoughts are like a river. It's like, or like life is like a river and like thoughts are like fish. And like, sometimes people have a better handle on them or a bigger net or a, a better way of like sort of catching it like slower. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like a slow burn, but some people can't help themselves, but to just say, just look at my fish. You know what I'm saying? 
like as soon as I got the thought, they're like, I'm going to lose this. Like it's a, it's like those high level ADD thinking. I'm one of those people. You also, yeah, you also I got to tell that. you right now. You, you, I'm like, Hey, you want to go play basketball? And, like, and you're like, I, I used to be a pool shock. My, for eight my years. father left. I never got to play basketball. <laughs> Dude, I know. It's like every single, every time someone asks me about, <laughs> do you play sports as a kid? I'm like, why does this circle back to my parents divorce? I don't, I don't know why I have to talk <laughs> about this right now. You, you and I were talking outside of a comedy show and I was like, how far do you think you could throw that rock? And you were like, well, my dad left when I was a child, so I didn't play very many sports. Don't have a strong like, arm. What the fuck? Developed it myself. Yeah. Um, Pappy wasn't around. He obviously had shit to do. <laughs> It'd be funny if like a baseball coach walks up to you and he's like, hey, you're new here. Do you want to come play? Join the... He's, I can't. I don't have a dad. I don't know exactly what my dad accomplished, right, in life or anything like that, so I don't want to like harp on him or like, get uh, down, but uh, I, w- I, w- I do want to say that like basically... There's a choice you have to make, like, uh, you know, as far as your presence with your children. It's like you working like I work like I work like 80 hours because I'm like constantly sh- doing a show or, or, or recording a podcast or editing it or writing jokes. or And then I have a normal job where I'm doing that 40 hours a week. It's like I'm constantly gone or doing something or working on something to like build stuff. So, like, I feel like I'm gone a lot, too. Like my dad was, but you have to make that choice. Like, are you going to be, are you going to be like, um, how do you say there all the time and like, you know, get annoying to them at some point and just be this kind of fucking painting on the wall, right? You just become an object, like a chair. You're just there all day. We're just living together. You know what I mean? Or are you going to be the person who's kind of a, you're there as much as you can be and you provide more. I'm able to provide more because of all the hard work that I do. I Does that make sense? I would much rather go through physical absenteeism Mm -hmm. as opposed to emotional absenteeism yes as far as like a parent is concerned like exactly i give them my all when i am there yeah like i i get it does that make sense yeah yeah yeah. so let's talk about the champ again i mean what flight who what airline was that uh jet blue jet blue jet blue black and blue blue. jet black and blue jet black eye yeah i think (laughs) <laughs> he got banned for like 10 years. Mike Tyson did? Yeah. What's up with people banning people all of a sudden, right? Uh, like every time you hit someone in public, you can get banned. I'm going to go fucking hit someone <laughs> somewhere I don't like. Thing? Did you see the thing with Bill O'Reilly? I don't like jail. What if I showed up to jail and I just slapped someone and they're like, you're banned for 10 years. Don't you show your face <laughs> and we don't want your kind here. You can't go to no more jails in this country for 10 whole years. You, you show up and smack someone like that. It's going to be, uh, it's just unacceptable. But it's also jet blue so it's like what am i really losing i've only flown delta so anyone who hears that i'm sorry i'm not a piece of shit i just i like to save money i fly american airlines normally you like american Uh uh-huh have you flown delta what's the difference to you delta you normally get to like watch uh like video options Uh uh-huh like there's always oh you there's the in-flight movie yeah i've only seen that in movies (laughs) Uh, really (laughs) yeah dude I think the only time I've ever flown Delta, though, it's been like from Kentucky to California or California to Virginia or. Right. Those are east to west coast uh, yeah. flights. Right. So I've only flown south to Florida and North Carolina, flown to Florida a few times. I got you. So actually different. I, I And I understand that. Like, that's the reason because I've never really been out west. Yeah. So that's the reason I haven't flown in some of the other ones. Like JetBlue also is one of those mm-hmm. coast to coast. Yeah. yeah. And then some are just north to south. You ever rode a bus? Uh, no, not really. I've never, I mean, a school bus, uh, like no, an RTA. No, 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 the RTA, I've ridden like a local transit bus. Uh, Greyhound is a good place to get like stabbed or yeah. like you get a, you get to go across the country for like $80, but also the people that are going across the country for $80, you don't want to be near for yo, <laughs> yo, yo. hours. Yo, that's <laughs> crazy. Bro. Look, is it so cheap? Like, is it is it only that cheap because you have to sacrifice a dog every time you ride it? They're like, you save money because we, <laughs> we have to sacrifice a Greyhound pup every time one leaves the station. Super bus? You can get a ticket from Louisville to Atlanta for 20 bucks. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen the Flix bus? The what? Flix bus. Flix? It's bright green. I just saw one. No. I just saw one. Uh, I don't even know where I was. I was on the highway. I drive. I do drive so much. I do. 
I was on the highway somewhere, and I saw a Flix bus last night. It was in Huber Heights. It was uh, off 70. It was coming out of a gas station. Did you know? Giant green bus. That you can still rent DVDs and, and VHSs from, uh, from Netflix? From Netflix. Yeah. I think it's the same like uh, nostalgia that people who still play N64 games or Atari games, uh, you know what I mean? Like people who still want to have that physical thing. It's the same. It's like a nostalgia. It's old school. It. There's a lot of people who even go further back than that, right? And they want to have like old like t- nine millimeter and ten millimeter films with reels in their house and home theater. Like more wealthier people, obviously, who can afford that. Every and time I think about those, I just think that, like, if I watch it, I'm going to be haunted by the demon that lives in the cave. <laughs> For so. sure, dude. <laughs> Do you remember that movie with Nicolas Cage, like 10 millimeter or 9 millimeter? Mm-hmm. About, like, snuff films and shit. It's pretty fucking gross. No, uh, what is that? What is that movie? Um, oh, my God. It, it's it's that premise where he's like a. Nick like Cage? A, no, 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 no. Uh, the main character, whose name is Ethan, it's played by Ethan Hawke, I think. Okay, I'm an Ethan Hawke fan. This is an older movie. I've it, seen him. He has glasses in the movie. He's an author that like solves cold cases. Okay, and it's like a really popular scary movie. Ethan Hawke. Can you Google it? Okay. You know what? Google Google away. Get your little magic fingers going. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I I can't I can't one hundred percent say. I was gonna say Ethan Hawke. You ever seen the Zodiac Killer with Jake Gyllenhaal? Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. He's a That's Zodiac the, Killer. You think so? The politician? No, I don't know. But 4chan made that thing up. <laughs> That's they, crazy. They, like, accused him of it. That's <laughs> crazy. That's the one thing about the internet. Like, they even said that, like, Donald Rumsfeld was a lizard, and there's a bunch of politicians who are apparently, like, dinosaurs or in real life or whatever, and they're wearing, like, people skin. Sinister. That's the name of that movie. Oh, yeah. See, I don't watch movies like that because I don't allow that energy in my life. Like, I used to I used Have to you ever be, been, ghost, like, ghost hunting? No, but I would love to, and this is the thing. Yeah. It's just kind of like what we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. kind of like what, uh, did you say Socrates or Aristotle? Aris- you quoted Aristotle earlier. Do you remember the quote? Yeah. What was it exactly? Uh, As the mark of an educated mind to entertain an idea without necessarily accepting it. Correct. So I feel like that. I feel like um, with all different spiritualities, whether you believe in ghosts or God or fucking crystals or whatever, I like to explore it. I like to check it out. So I would like to ghost hunt just to entertain it because I think that could be fun. But I've never really seen a ghost. I don't wholeheartedly believe in that or anything. I was on an episode of the Paranormal Search. Uh and we investigated this house. It was uh, in Summit, Mississippi. And uh, that place was real spooky. Do you think it was really haunted or did you feel like an... Sometimes energies are more real. I don't know. When I'm it comes to like ghosts and stuff. It's like an energy more than it is a, a person that's like a ghost. Does kinda, that make sense? Yeah, I get it. I, I'm kind of a weenie. So maybe. <laughs> so you're a little but bit like, of a puss. But when it comes like, to ghosts. There was like weird stuff that happened there. Uh, that I can't really explain, so I'll, I'll chalk it up to being ghosts. Can you explain to me how you got to this place? Like, what exactly was your experience? Was it a haunted house? It's like a thing that people can sign up for and just go to? No, no, no. Uh, okay, so the Paranormal Search was a, a TV show in Louisiana when I lived there. Um, hosted by this guy named Kenny, who was my friend's roommate. And basically, he was like, oh, this is what I do. And I was like, I'd do that. And then... So you hung out with real paranormal investigators? Yeah. It wasn't like just a spoof? So it wasn't like you didn't sign up and like pay someone to take you on a tour of a fucking no. a haunted kid graveyard? No, they were like, yeah, next time we are scheduled for something, we can go. And then I think, you know, two months go by and they're like, do you still want to do this? And I'm like, all right, well, I guess I already said, yeah. Yeah. So You're one of those dudes. That's why I like you, bro. Because like as a friend... Cause like you're one of those dudes that will just go out and do something like that. Yeah. Like we're going to do a fucking, we're going to take a run in August. We're going to go on a mud run. Tough mutter. Tough mutter. That's crazy. But this is a, this is a thing that I've been wanting to do is just for content is like, go to some of these like UFO conventions. Yeah. There's one called the Mothman convention. And like talk to those people. Yeah. And just talk to them. Just get some interviews like on the spot interviews with some of these wild people. I want to know what, 
It's like, have you seen it? Did your mom see it? Like, do you have a tattoo of it? Like, what is this thing? Do you believe in aliens? Why do you believe? I think aliens. It's a cult thing. It's like a religion. Aliens, ghost hunters, and like uh, religious people all have this in common where they're like, uh, with the same thing with like wi- like people that think they're they're witches. Maybe they are. I don't know if they are. Uh-huh. Probably not. But like, <laughs> they they all want something greater than the status quo. Well, they so, it's I think it's okay to believe in something bigger than us. And so that's kind of what they're aiming for, right? Yeah, I think that it's fine. However, you want to consign like the reasoning for like an inexplicable thing to you. Yeah, you gotta get a little closer when you're talking to her. Happening for the people who are only listening. Uh, uh, however you want to explain something that you can't explain happening to you mm-hmm. happening. Um, that's fine. Like I, I, if I also can't explain it then I'm just going to be like, maybe you have the right answer. Maybe I don't. Yes. Let's I think this is a slippery slope when you start talking about creation and Do you think all magic that stuff. is real. Mm, you think, well, you know what? That's a that's a whole different bag of tricks that. <laughs> so I so this is my, my one of my first uh, loves as a kid was was magic like David Blaine. I also love street magic and uh-huh. those those that that show where the masked magician would like reveal all these like miraculous tricks. Yeah. So I, I my mom got me like card decks. I was I would wanted to be a magician like when I was a kid. I yeah. honestly did right. Uh-huh. So I know that's fucking stupid, but I did. I loved it. And so I thought it was real. And I still think that there's like, um, I was obviously a science to it. And it's like, uh, it's a lot of like psychological things that go into it. No, no, no. You mean like, you mean like card tricks. I mean like potions. (laughs) Like Like, (laughs) what kind of magic are you talking about? Like, I I don't know. Like love potions and shit. Like, do you think that that ever... Because it's always been part of the lore of humanity. You know, it's always been somewhere in the background that there's, this is magic, this is magic, this is magic. Like there's voodoo always, dolls and shit? I guess, yeah, I guess that's that's magic. Like dark magic. Yeah, or light, I don't know. I, no, well, I, I think if you're, if you, if you start trying to fuck with the elements, see, life has a way of kind of like, um, it has a, it's definitely in a constant flux, but it kind of has its own flow and you kind of got to go with it and be in the moment and be in the back seat sometimes and be an observer because if you start fucking with it, that's what black magic is. You start trying to turn the tides in your own favor and then you can, it's like the butterfly effect, right? You fucking kill a butterfly in Thailand and the next thing you know, your mom gets ran over by a car. So you think black magic is a bad thing? I think we should be careful when we fuck with it. That's why I was talking about those movies earlier. Let's circle back around to that because we got off topic. I think, I think black dark, magic matters. Those dark so movies. <laughs> 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 black magic does matter dude but it's like those dark wicked movies when you let that energy into your life um it can fucking come it can stay with you right like subconsciously even if it's not physical oh uh, you think that's why mcdonald's always gets my orders wrong yeah for sure no i think it's because i allowed this dark magic into my life i think so <laughs> now they just can't help they yeah, have dude. to put onions on my what are you a fucking satanist bro yeah yeah, but, I don't. I don't believe in ghosts. You know what? I think it would be cool though. I would do a séance. I'll do all that shit. That shit doesn't bother me. I'm not scared of it. And if it was real, I think it'd be kind of fun. I'll be honest. I'd be real. I think it'd be real spooky if you were like, "Let's go into this room and talk to, I don't know, a demon." And then you were like, "Haha, it's so funny." And then like a portal opens in the room, like a f- one that you can see. Yeah terrifying dude why would that what i mean yeah but if he was like listen you about to say why would that be terrifying yeah because what if he was like listen hey dude why would unleashing the depths of hell be terrifying he's like hey dude check this out i just want to let you know that like your next three generations are going to be like uber wealthy we just need you to kind of you know help us out a little bit you know we need you to kind of kill your firstborn kill your firstborn we need you to implement some of these plans just sign this little contract or whatever uh not with the pen nope not with the pen yeah yeah the knife uh, <laughs> go ahead. There you go. Yeah, just one no, drop be, is good. God, it would be so annoying to write your name in your own blood because you'd have to. And imagine you left an I, like you didn't dot the eyes. <laughs> well, what if this happens? What if like a clone of you walks out of the portal too, and he just stabs you, and he has plenty of blood, <laughs> and he's like, "I'm gonna go fuck your wife." <laughs> like, don't, <laughs> don't do that, dude. That would be the worst. Because have you ever seen The Sixth Day with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I reference this movie so much, is and no one's movie, ever seen that's it. That's the movie with Haley Joe Osment, where you can see ghosts. No, that's the Sixth Sense with Bruce Willis. So the Sixth Day. Oh wait, the Sixth 
Sixth Sense. That's the movie with Chris Rock where he's like the, the flamboyant guy. No, that's Rush Hour. <laughs> Rush Hour. That's not Rush Hour. That's Chris Tucker and Jackie Rush, Chan. I'm just Rush Hour, that, that's, that company, that's that country that's at war with Ukraine, I think. No, Rush Hour is not at war with Ukraine. <laughs> I, I think it is. Huh? I don't think it is, bro. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's not. We're not. I don't think we were supposed to talk about that. They're, they, well, it's not. We're not pro Rush Hour. I'll say that. I'll say that if anyone's pro Rush Hour, it's not Ukraine either. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not right now. I don't blame. Yeah. Actually, I don't know whose side I'm on. Um, I don't think I'm on anybody's side until they come over here and, uh, and if whoever wins, that's it's like yeah, that's the new corporate power. All of a sudden, that'd be pretty crazy, dude. Yeah, it's not like, you know, big countries abuse their power or anything like that. Like no, like China or not anything. here. Not here. Not in this big country. Hey, yeah, no. No no corruption over here. Keep, you, keep you have, on going. How do you feel about Twitter? Well, Elon Musk buying it for forty two billion, eighty two billion? Forty four. Forty four billion dollars. Yeah. I feel that I think it's funny that Donald Trump was like, I'm good, Elon. I don't think I'm gonna be coming over. <laughs> He was like, but I did this for our friendship. I just hope he brings back like Alex Jones. That's who I care about. Okay, that's and a person. Sam Hyde. This is a thing. Alex Jones actually was one of those people who like I looked up to when I was younger because I was like, holy shit, this guy's super entertaining and this is fun. And I think he's actually giving me and some of my friends some stuff to like look into that's deeper than the regular narrative mm -hmm. and that's entertaining yep. more than it is anything. So it's just, it was like a fun, it's like reading a mystery book or something. I think right? he clearly like fucked up with Sandy hook. That's what I'm saying. That's, but, that's but where he, he also fucked up. acknowledged it. And he was like, I fucked up on this. as an entertainer. He was Listen, amazing. But, was saying, and as a human I being, I don't really know who he is, but I hear that that's actually a little bit of a character. It's an embellished, I'm sure Texan that he, that he portrays as Alex Jones. Like the drunk guy is not really him. You know what I mean? The goblins are here to eat your blood. And, and he like, I, I get that he's playing some a character. You know what I mean? Like in a way he's definitely, I get that. Every personality is though. We really are. I was telling someone that recently. I was like, you know, you can say whatever you want, but when the cameras come on, you're a different person. Like you're not, sure. you're not exactly different per se, but there's an element about it. That's like, okay, I, I am being recorded, so, like, let's be conscious of everything that I'm saying. That's that's the change. It's like you, you know that you're being observed, and for whatever reason, that flips a switch in your brain. Yeah, I use the word gay to describe less stuff when I'm being recorded. <laughs> I'm progressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I'm so progressive right now. You're the most progressive. So, what, you're you're really into, like the politics side of it. Like I always see you posting stuff and it's like, sometimes you say stuff that's like, like smart or out of my element, or maybe it's not necessarily like, like I'm not saying like you're smarter than me, but you probably are more educated than me. But like, you just say things about politics that I don't necessarily understand. Cause I don't understand politics and I don't look into it. That's why I don't understand it. It's like a, that saying that as a blanket statement so that I don't have to be involved. Like I don't get it. Blah. So yeah. I can completely understand an interest or a disinterest in anything political. I, I, I completely get that because one, like me saying stuff, it doesn't really, the, the only reason that I have for saying the stuff that I do is because I feel like everybody deserves to know something. Everybody yeah. deserves to know the same truths. It almost feels like you're like the voice for the every man for like a dude like me. You break, you break it down a little bit. Um, I, what I don't like is that, Okay, so the people that are that are rightly I'm I'm a centrist. I'm I'm dead in the middle. All uh -huh. right. I believe that both sides say some valid things and I think that governments should be smaller. So what I am is I'm a centrist libertarian. And I can criticize anybody on the right and they're like they might be like, Oh, you know, fuck off. You're you're stupid or whatever, but they won't they won't want me to be quiet or they won't delete me on Facebook for it saying something like that. Yeah. But on the left, I don't get the same, I don't get the same treatment. Yeah. As soon as there's dissent, you're automatically the enemy. I don't understand. Like if you have gone through your entire life without meeting any criticism, you're probably not doing so great. Yeah. 
You you're just not. Yeah. Or, or if every time you have criticism, you feel like it's a personal attack, or you know that it's, oh, I don't want to talk to that person. They said I was doing something wrong that one time. That's goofy. Yeah. That's goofy. It's it's a mental thing. It is. It's a it's a real it really is. I think that's it's a mental health issue. It is what it is. Yeah, it's an Amber Heard shit in your bed situation. I, I also cut your finger. I off. like uh, I like politics because it gives me something to like write jokes about. Mm-hmm. I I don't really do a lot of political stuff. You know what's cool about politics when it comes to comedy is like, if you're well read and you're educated and you know comedy, if you punch up a joke that's about politics, a lot of times the few people in the crowd who get it, or most people in the crowd who get it, when they laugh, other people laugh because they're. Like you train them to, but also people want to get it Mm -hmm. right. That's why I just brought it up because I was like, maybe you'll say something and I'll, I'll absorb some of it somewhere. Right. I I have this joke. It it doesn't belong to a bit. So I'm going to just say it right now. So I think Joe Biden sounds like a drunk guy explaining stuff to a drunker guy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Joe Biden. Yeah. All right. Well, we got it. And then we got (laughs) like, if you're like drunk and you're trying to explain to your drunker friend how they shouldn't like drive tonight yeah, yeah. because they're too too wasted, yeah, yeah don't, that, that's no, your drunk. Don't Biden. press the button. Can you can no, you do you an impression? Can't, you can't. You go driving and then you you're dead. <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that's a slippery slope, Joey that's Beans. It. That's it, man. Like, <laughs> dude, our president is old as fuck. He's like 175 that, years old. It seems weird, dude. It seems weird that we have a president that's 293 he, years old and no like one's even the talking crypt about keeper's it. granddad. Like he was like, I remember the founding fathers. They're in the grade below me. Like, they, yeah. <laughs> it's so weird, dude. He's just made of like pixie dust and like he volcanic talks, ash. Man. He talks like. Like your uncle who you don't want to talk to for too long at like family gatherings because you're like, ah, this is sad now. Why does he have the podium? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When's the uh, Condoleezza going to come out here? Condoleezza. Condoleezza. Sounds like an Italian name. Uh, Condoleezza. That's funny. <laughs> the fucking, a lot of Italians are in politics, dude. What's that one dude's name? Fucci? <laughs> uh, uh, found <laughs> Doctor uh, Footwear, Anthony Fettuccini. Fettuccini hey, Alfalcho. You come over here. You get your <laughs> you get your Parmesan shots. You're not gonna fucking be allowed in public anymore. Everybody's gonna get to meet based in the veins today. <laughs> That's right. Extra large needles for everybody. Clean injection sites for everybody you're in ta- New York. Talking about that makes me think. Like so. Oh, it's the camera guy. <laughs> What is he? He's, he's late. Call, he's calling you? Yeah, he's calling me. And we have Cap. Thank you, Cap, for being here today. The amazing citywide studio multimedia room. We have the owner, Capitol Hill. Christopher Hill, thank you, sir, for being the camera guy. Justin, you missed out, you asshole. I hope you watch this, you son of a bit. No, I think he's uh he was on vacation with his girl. Hey, g- hey, good, hey, good he's job of, being on time. time. You're really good at being on time. Yeah, he no, he's probably back in town, and he's calling to see if we still need him to come. Uh, to to run the cameras, but I don't think we're doing that second show. Uh, I have you, and then I have someone rented out the place uh, today. Which, um, sh- if you guys at home, if you are, I hate to make this an ad break with you here, but if you guys at home, if you know anyone who uh, has wanted a podcast, whether you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, comedian, uh, if you're a musician, if you have a personality, um, we are. We are starting to do packages here at Citywide Multimedia for podcasters. So if you guys would like uh, anything to do with that, just hit myself up on Facebook or Christopher Hill, or you can email citywidestudios at gmail.com. Um, but yeah. And hold on. Go to ahead. Br- no, to br- please. To wake away from his please ad read. take away from I got to tell you my own ad read. Okay. All right. So he said, if you're talented, but even if you're untalented, they will still, you can come here. Yeah. I mean. You can pay for our services. You can. Ah, you know, people may not like you. It's fine. You, you're like, ah, nobody likes me. And that's true. Most people don't. But you can still, <laughs> you can come here. You can sit in this chair or the other chair. There's other chairs. You can talk into a microphone. We had lots of chairs. People will be like, ah, that's what they'll say. They'll go, ah. Yeah, but it would be fun. I think it's all about the experience, all right? Uh, it's all about the experience. Um, but, yeah, dude, um, 
We're, yeah, so we have someone who rented it out after this, and then I was going to have another one afterward. I think I'm coming back on Monday to do another one. But, um, yeah, dude, I'm just uh, I'm glad you're in town. Um, when, when is this yeah. coming out? Um, I would say like two weeks. We get a little closer to it. Sorry. When is it what? I was asking when it was coming out. For the people at home, he was just asking me when it was coming out. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be cool if you could answer that one. I, you know, just yeah, no, two weeks. So I have run by I you again. I was like, okay. Um, well, so we would have yeah. just done that show the week before. Because like, I was going to plug that show. Oh, you know what? I can put this out tomorrow. <laughs> Let's plug that show. Yeah, so if you guys made it all the way through this, plug that show right now because I'm on those shows this weekend. The Derby City All-Stars at the Comedy Caravan. I will be hosting all five shows Thursday at 7.30, Friday at 7.30, 9.30, Saturday at 7.30, 9.30. My boy Johnny will be here along with the most talented people in Louisville uh, as far as comedians are concerned. Um, you're going to have me, Lena Beamish, Jeff Toy, I think Jamie Utley, Johnny Woods, the man himself. Um, Keith McGill will be on there. Kimbro, Eric Kimbro will be on there. Um, I'm not quite sure who else. I know that a couple other uh, names were on there, but yeah, it's, you know. It's five great shows. I mean, it's the biggest show in Kentucky, really. I mean, the Derby City All-Stars is like the biggest thing that Louisville um, has. If so. you're getting your tickets, get your tickets because they're going to be gone. They're going to be probably like within a couple of hours. Of I just want to say I'm grateful for the opportunity and I'm super excited. Uh, got a lot of friends down there and the comedy scene is great. So I'm happy to be part of it, man. And I, oh, and your boy Austin Baker. Austin Baker. Austin will be Baker on one of those and shows. Jeff Toy and Jamie Utley. And mm-hmm. I don't know some of the other ones, but I've, I've heard about those other people too. So that's it's going to be stacked, really. I mean, that's a, it's a crazy yep. fucking show. Yep. So all weekend, yeah, we'll put this out today. This will be out either Monday or Tuesday morning. Um, I appreciate you coming, my man. A lot more in the future for you and I. We're going to be doing some stuff behind the scenes, and then um, we'll announce all that shit later. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to have you. Glad that you're back in in, uh, in the Midwest, bro. Or you're in the South. I'm, you got to cross the Ohio line to get here. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but you're not you're not far, bro. So I'm glad that you you know, you know swing back around the, uh, yeah. and do the show again. Um, we'll Absolutely. keep you in rotation. Absolutely, brother. All right, my dude. Thank you, Chris, for being behind the camera tonight. And I, I appreciate you guys for watching. Um, it always makes sense to go to uh, Spotify and give us a five-star review or go to YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot when you subscribe to our YouTube and when you subscribe to our Spotify because you're helping this thing keep going. You're helping us grow. And, um, you know, this uh, this all makes sense. So help us make sense of it and, and, and uh, surprise, su- subscribe and support the channel. So I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, dude, that was fun. Thanks for coming, brother. You're fun. <laughs>